All right, in the last video we talked, uh, or I talked, you listened, watched, I don't know, whatever. We did something with limits where, or the way we solved limits was graphically where, like, number one here, the limit as you approach negative two, we found negative two <coughs> right here. And then we looked on the left side and the right side. And by looking at the graph, we were able to say that that limit is negative three because that's where both sides were approaching. And that point up there was insignificant. And then also, uh, limit as you approach two, well, at two, left side and right side were going to different places. So we said that limit does not exist. That's solving a limit through graphs or solving it graphically. Uh, what I wanted to look at this time was is solving limits with algebraic techniques, meaning you don't have a graph, but you do have an equation of the function or the graph, and you have to solve it based on the equation. And these, um, <clears throat> in my opinion, are, are uh, I don't know if they're easy or not. I guess you can decide that. Uh, but for example, what you may see is something like the limit, and my limit is really bad. That's supposed to say limit, or L-I-M. Let's say the limit as x approaches 2 of, uh, I can't say f of x, I need an equation. Let's do 2x squared minus 7. Okay, so if we're going to solve limits algebraically, the very first thing you always do, and notice this one, I gave you an equation instead of a function, like right here, I've said some generic f of x. Now I'm going to actually give you equations of the, of the function. And the first thing we're going to do to solve limits, our very first technique, and we'll add to this list, is we're simply going to plug in. We're simply going to plug in and hope that works. Uh, so in this case, we're approaching 2. So what I'm going to do is I'm simply going to plug 2 in for this x, and that's going to give me 2 times 2 squared minus 7. And then you solve that order of operations. 2 squared is 4, and so 2 times 4 minus 7 is 1. And that would be the answer to the limit. Uh, that's probably the easiest kind. Just simply plug in and hope it works. Um, another one like that, the limit, and that's a really bad limit. But that's what my limits usually look like, so deal with it. Let's do the limit as x approaches. Um, let's do negative 1. No, let's not do that. Let's do 3 of 3x minus 1 to the 2 thirds. Okay, well, again, I'm going to start by just trying to plug in 3. And if I do that, I get 3 times 3 is 9, minus 1 is 8 to the 2 thirds. And then we'll clean that up. We can do 8 to the 2 thirds. Uh, the easiest way, I think, to do 8 to the 2 thirds is to split it up into 8 to the 1 third and then square 8 to the 1 third. Uh, 8 to the 1 third, that's the same thing as cube root of 8. And the cube root of 8 is 2. So 2 squared is 4, and that'll be your answer. That's the easiest way. We're simply just going to plug in and hope that works. Uh, unfortunately, most of the time, you can't simply plug in. You're going to run into problems like this one. Um, let's say the limit as x is approaching 4 of, <coughs> let's do 2x minus 8 over x squared minus 16. A problem like this one, if you plug in 4, you get, let's see, 2 times 4 minus 8 over 4 squared minus 16. Keep cleaning that up. 8 minus 8 is 0 divided by 16 minus 16 is 0. Okay, 16, or 16, 0 divided by 0. That is something that we refer to as an indeterminate form. And we will talk more about indeterminate forms later. Um, but just note that that's called indeterminate form. And what indeterminate means is you don't know what the answer is. You can't simply look at 0 over 0 and know what the answer is. At first, you're probably thinking, well, that's a bunch of zeros, therefore the answer is 0, but it doesn't work out that way. Um, remember, one of the laws of math is you cannot divide by 0. So what we're going to do, anytime we get an indeterminate form, what that means for us is we need to simply, whoa, go away. That's not what I want. We need to do more work. So if you get 0 over 0, that just means do more work. Don't stop. We have to clean it up some. And if you look at this problem, y'all may have noticed. I don't know if you have or not. Okay, this function does factor. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to restart with my limit, limit as x approaches 4. And I'm simply going to factor top and bottom. 2x plus minus 8, I can factor out a 2. That gives me x minus 4. On bottom, x squared minus 16 is x plus 4, x minus 4. And then when you cancel that, those 4s cancel, 
and then I'm left, or those fours, those x minus fours cancel, and this is what I'm left with. And once we have it simplified, cleaned up as much as I can, now I try to plug in again. Those are gone, so I'm going to plug 4 into 2 over x plus 4, which will give me 2 over 4 plus 4, which is 2 over 8, which is 1 fourth, and that's actually the answer. So in this case, we started with 0 over 0, but the actual answer ended up being 1 fourth, um, and that's what an indeterminate form will do, is it'll give you a lot of times some kind of a number answer that you can't determine from 0 over 0, hence the name indeterminate. Uh, let's see, another problem like this. Let's try the limit as x approaches negative 3. Limit x approaches negative 3 of x squared minus x minus 12 over x squared minus 9. And again, my first approach, ah, bell's ringing. My first approach every time is going to be to plug in. So let's hope when I plug this in, it works. Negative 3 squared is 9, minus a negative 3 would be plus 3, minus 12, over negative 3 squared is 9, minus 9, and when you combine those, 9 plus 3 minus 12 is 0, 9 minus 9 is 0, so that means we have to do more work. Uh, when you need to do some work, I chose to rewrite the whole limit, but one little trick you can do so you don't have to rewrite the limit as x approaches negative 3 every time is just put a little vertical bar right there, and I'm going to factor and I'm going to work my problem going down. So x squared minus x minus 12 factors to x plus 3, x minus 4. x squared minus 9 is a difference of squares, x whoop, plus 3, x minus 3. And notice the x plus 3's cancel, and when those cancel, I was left only with x minus 4 over x minus 3. And now that I've canceled, I try plugging in again. I my limit is approaching negative 3, so I'm going to take negative 3, and I'm going to plug it in down here to my simplified form. Negative 3 minus 4 over negative 3 minus 3. That gives me negative 7 over negative 6, or 7 over 6. And that's what that limit is. <coughs> uh, and that one's, this is our second way of, of solving limits, where uh, I started this list where we plug in. If you can't plug in, then we're going to see if we can factor and cancel. So if, if plugging in fails, next thing we're going to look for is factoring and canceling. Um, let's see, how are we on time? Seven minutes. Doing great. Um, let's see. Let's try... Um, where's a good one? Where's a good one? Where's a good one? Limit as x approaches 1. I have no idea what number we're on. Limit as x approaches 1 of x to the fourth minus 1 over x minus 1. Um, and I guess I'll put that bottom one in parentheses. I don't know why I put the top one in. Uh, if I plug in 1, 1 minus 1 is 0. Plug in 1 on the bottom, 1 minus 1 is 0. We have to do more work. So I'm going to see if I can factor this. And x to the fourth minus 1 will factor. That will factor to x squared plus 1. It's a difference of squares times x squared minus 1. The bottom, I can't factor the bottom, so I'll just leave it as x minus 1. And nothing canceled. If nothing cancels, then you need to keep seeing if you can factor. And this one, you can actually continue factoring x squared minus 1. So this is kind of a two-step factor problem. x squared minus 1 is a difference of squares, so that's x plus 1, x minus 1. Everything else comes along for the ride. You cannot factor x squared plus 1. That's a sum of squares. There is no sum of squares factoring formula. Uh, so let's see. So I factor that. Now I notice x minus 1, x minus 1. Um, and I'm left with x squared plus 1, x plus 1. And now when I plug in 1, 1 squared plus 1 is 2. 1 plus 1 is 2. 2 times 2 is 4, and that's the answer to the limit. So try plugging in. If plugging in fails, you factor, and hopefully something will cancel. So um, the last technique I'm going to show you if factoring doesn't work, there's another technique, which we'll use, say, right here. Let's say the limit as x approaches 9 of x minus 9 over the square root of x minus 3. Okay, this one, when I try to plug in 9, always try to plug in first, because sometimes you can. 9 minus 9 is 0. Square root of 9 is 3. Minus 3 is 0. That's an indeterminate form, so I need to do more work. And the more work we're going to do with this one, and I'm going to need to erase my 0 over 0, 
is we're actually going to multiply by the conjugate. And um, if you don't remember conjugates, if you have something like a plus b, the conjugate of a plus b is a minus b. You simply change the sign in the middle. And the beauty of conjugates is when you multiply those out, a times a is a squared. a times negative b is negative ab. b times a is positive ab. b times negative b is negative b squared. Every single time you multiply conjugates, the innards and the outers, when you do the outer and inner, they all, will always cancel, and you're simply left with a squared minus b squared, which is your first and your last. So when you multiply by conjugates, you only need to do the f and the l. You don't have to do the full FOIL. So I'm going to multiply by the conjugate, and you always multiply by the conjugate of whatever the radical term is. So I have root x minus 3. I'm going to multiply top and bottom by root x plus 3. So I'm going to multiply the top by root x plus 3, and then we'll clean up based on that. And when you're multiplying by the conjugate, what you need to remember is you only expand, only multiply out the conjugates. Do not distribute the non-conjugates. So my top, my top, these are not conjugates. x minus 9 and x root x plus 3 are not conjugates. So I'm actually going to keep my top as it is, x minus 9 times root x plus 3. But my bottom, when I multiply out my bottom, remember you, you only have to do the f and l. You don't have to do the the outers and the innards. So root x times root x is just x. Negative 3 times positive 3 is negative 9. So when I foil out the bottom, you get x minus 9. The x minus 9s cancel, leave me with just root x plus 3. And if everything cancels on bottom, it's a 1. And now that I've canceled something, I'll plug in 9 again, and I've got the square root of 9, which is 3, plus 3, divided by 1, which is 6. Yeah, 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 yeah. So the three techniques, and I'm kind of going back, maybe I should have just carried this with me. But the three techniques, we're going to try plugging in first. If that doesn't work, we're going to try to factor and cancel. If that doesn't work, then we're going to multiply by the conjugate. Multiply by the conjugate. And those are the three techniques for solving, um, for solving limits algebraically.